Hello year 9 students, this is Mr. Shaban and today we're going to complete our lesson of variation and inheritance. So without wasting any time, let's start the lesson. Hello year 9 students. Today's lesson is talking about inheritance. It's part of the variation and inheritance unit. Our learning objective of today is to learn how the genes are passed from one parent to the offspring. The second learning objective is to know how the genes provide the instructions that determine some of the characteristics of the organisms. The keywords are genes and inheritance. We're going to have a homework, which is going to be through the Google assignment. So uh, please double check the Google assignment in order to complete your homework and to not miss any more. I'm going to start with a quick recap on the previous lessons. We have taken the variation and we said variation is the differences between the individuals of the same species. And as you can see in the picture, we have people that have different skin colors, that have different eye colors, different hair colors. All of these things are called variation because these differences belong to the same species of the individual, belong to the same species, which is called Homo sapiens. And then we have spoken about the factors behind the variation. We said we have two different kinds of variation. We have inherited variation and environmental variation. Inherited variation. We said the variation based on the inheritance came as a result of passing the genes or the information, the DNA, from the father and the mother toward the offspring. As you know, the children usually look a little like their father and a little like their mother, but they will not be identical to, e to either of them. That's because the offspring or the baby has taken part of the genes, half of the genes from the father, the other half from the mother, and that's why the baby will have a small part of the father's full information or genes and the other half of the gene from the mother is going to look a little bit like the father and a little bit like the mother and that's why we have an inherited variation let's look deeper into that from the mother's side the baby takes the egg cell the egg cell contains half of the DNA on the other hand from the father's side the baby takes the sperm cell which have half of the genetic information for the baby. When both of them fuse together, join together in a process called fertilization, they develop the first cell of the baby. And that's the process of fertilization and this is the core for the inherited variation. Based on the genetic information that the babies take from the father and the mother, they are going to have certain characteristics that for sure will look different than the other ones. Here are some examples of inherited variation in humans. We might have the eye color, the hair color, skin color, and we might have the looped or loopless ear, as you can see in the picture. We might have the ability to rule your tongue. All of these are based on the inheritance. Not only that, but also the gender. The gender, guys, is one of the main characteristic which is passed and determined by the genes of the father and that's why we can have in the same family some of the siblings might be males the other ones are going to be females that's based on the genes uh, carried from the parents toward the offspring as you can see in the picture we have different eye colors and we have the differences between the ears one is looped ear and the other one is loopless ear all of these variations are belonging to humans which are found in the same species which is called Homo sapiens. The other factor is called environmental variation. Environmental variation is caused by the help of the environment. I'm going to give you some of the examples that might affect an organism based on the environmental factors. The first one is climate. As you know people that live in a place which have a high exposure to the sun, they might develop darker skin, while the other people that don't have sun around for a long time in the year, they might develop a white skin. Not only that, but also the diet. If the people are eating a lot, this is going to cause uh, an increase in the weight, 
so they might develop a thicker body and people who are eating in moderation or eating less they might develop a thinner body so that's another way of the uh, environmental variation based on the environmental factors not only that accidents culture lifestyle all of these might develop some of the variation between the humans and remember we're still talking about the same species which is called homo sapiens the variation caused by the surrounding is called environmental variation and that's the second example of the variation here are some features that are caused by environmental variation like the language like the religion like the color of some flowers you know some flowers might develop a blue uh, might become blue color if they are found in acidic soil and they might become a pink color if they are uh, developed or uh, planted in an alkali soil so based on the pH of the soil we might have different colors and that's another example for environmental variation in order to show you the two factors together the inherited variation and the environmental variation I want you to imagine that we have two identical twins twin A and twin B we're going to say that twin A and twin B are identical so they carry the same genes from their parents so we have no inherited variation but we might expose twin A to the food more than we have exposed twin B so twin A is going to eat a lot and is going to develop a heavier and taller body than twin B so changing one factor environmental factor which is the food have, they have affected the body of the twins one have developed a heavier body taller body while the other one have developed a slimmer body and might be shorter body so the food or the environment have affected the growth of the bodies right now we're going to look into the course book questions we're going to answer the questions which are found on the lesson of variation the first question the latin name of species of snails shown in the picture is called sepia numeralis the first question why do scientists give spe species a latin name in order to understand this question you need to look around here in the middle east we speak arabic and when you move a little bit toward the america they speak english uk they speak english other places in Europe speak Spanish, Portuguese, and so on. So an item like a watermelon might be called different names based on the place where you live. In order to have a common understanding between the scientists, they have decided to give every species a two-word Latin names. So it doesn't matter where you live or which language you speak, you're going to call a snail a certain name, you're going to call humans a certain name, and so on and so on. So, uh, the simple answer for that, Latin names can be used by scientists all over the world. No matter what, what language they speak, the same species have the same Latin name everywhere. Second question, snails are eaten by birds. Snails with plain yellow or cream shell are generally found in the dry grass while the snails with uh, stripes are often found in the woodland. In your point of view, why do you think the yellow is found in the dry grass, dry grass and the other one is found in the green environment? Yes, it's based on the camouflage. You know, each snail is going to found in the place where it's going to be better camouflaged in. So the yellow snails are going to found in the dry grass because dry grass is going to look yellow while the other one is going to find the woodland because it's better camouflaged over there. Right now it's activity time. We're going to go through the activity of 3.2, the measuring variation in humans, page 44 and 45. In this activity, you are going to measure and record the variation in rest circumference in your family. So basically what you're going to do is to get a small ruler, a flexible ruler, and you can get a pencil, paper in order to record your result. The first thing you're going to do is to measure the circumference 
of the right rest of every person in your family and I want you to write down your measurements in a list like the table shown next to the uh, statements right now remember to write down the unit in centimeter use your measurements to collect the mean or the average rest circumference of the people in your family right now I want you to draw a neat table to represent your uh, result and I want you to put the second uh, column for the tally we're going to put a mark for each member of your family who is belonging to one of these ranges and the third column is going to be for the number of people after you, wrote, you write the tally I want you to add them up to write the correct number next to each one And after you finish your uh, table of result, I want you to draw a frequency diagram like the one which is presented in front of you. I want you to put the rest uh, circumference on the x-axis and the numbers on the y-axis. And based on the result, I want you to represent it in a power chart. So I'm going to give you three minutes in order to complete this task at home but this time you're not going to measure the members of your family but I want you to just present my result, my uh, informations as a frequency diagram I'm going to keep the, board, the table for you on the board draw your uh, frequency diagram once you finish it I want you to compare it with the answer which is going to be found in front of you within minutes so please get your pencil, get your ruler and remember how to draw the bar charts it's way too easy and don't make any mistake we don't draw with a pen okay guys time is over I'm going to keep the result for you for like half a minute I want you to double check your answer against my answer and after you finish we're going to complete the questions based on the activity The first question on the activity, what is the overall range of rest circumference in uh, the class? Uh, we have the smallest one is 8 up to the largest one which is 18.9 Which rest circumference is the most common in your class based on my result? The most common one is between 8 to 8.9 where it has 4 people then let's move to page 46 and 47 question 1 list three features that the young giraffe have inherited from its parents we have long neck uh, pattern coat and long leg perfect second question list three features that the kitten have inherited from their parents we have uh, different examples I want you to include any similarity between the kitten and the parent as an example the fur pattern or the eye color any of them is going to be uh, considered correct uh, third question that's a picture of twin identical twin and the question is asking us to describe three features of the twin in the photograph that are caused by their genes you can include anything which is based on the similarities in the bodies like the hair color eyebrow nose shape any uh, visible feature is going to be accepted the second or the, the fourth question describe the three of their features that are caused by environment you might speak about any differences like the t-shirt or any difference based on the environment will be accepted as we have reached to the end of today's lesson today we have talking about uh, the variation we have talked about the inherited variation and the environmental variation and we have answered some questions based on the frequency diagram and how to represent our result and how to calculate the average for some of our results i hope you have enjoyed today's lesson and see you next time